All right, it's time. Today, you're going to learn how to make some damn eyeballs. Eyeballs are so important. Without them, your characters go from this to this. Ugh, no thanks. The thing is, I've watched a ton of eyeball tutorials on YouTube, and most of them were super confusing and hard. So with that in mind, I'll keep this one short and concise. The first thing we're going to do is get our render engine set up the way we want it to be. Hop over into the Render Properties tab. Make sure you have Eevee selected and check the box for Ambient Occlusion and then Screen Space Reflections. Open up the Screen Space Reflections flag and check the Refraction box. A wise philosopher once theorized that eyeballs are actually made of nothing more than balls. That philosopher was me. I said that. To create the basic shape of our eyes, hit Shift plus A, then go to Mesh and select a UV sphere. Now, we want to rotate this on the Y axis by 90 degrees. To do this, type R to rotate, and then Y to rotate along the Y axis, the 90 for 90 degrees. You can absolutely use the rotate tool here in the tool menu, but hotkeys will be a bit quicker. Now, we want to go into edit mode and grab these faces. Switch to your move tool and push the faces back a bit. This will be the lens in the pupil area of the eye. I like to add a bevel here to soften up this hard edge. You can select an edge loop like this by holding the Alt key and then clicking. Next, grab your bevel tool and break the edge loop into two segments. In the lower left hand menu, we can now add as many segments as we want. There, that looks better. I used something like 20 segments here. Now, go back into object mode and right click, then select Shade Auto Smooth to get rid of that geometric surface. Now, we're going to make the outer glassy part of the eyeball, or as you science minded people prefer, the cornea. Add another sphere and rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees. Pop on X-ray mode and scale it up a bit. Now, just like before, go into edit mode and grab the same set of faces, only this time we're going to slide them outward instead. I'm going to toggle on proportional editing with this icon up here. Proportional editing lets us affect the surrounding geometry that's linked to our selection. As you move your faces, you can scroll on the middle mouse button to change how much geometry is affected. Once you got a shape you like, shade it smooth just like before. There, that's it for the modeling. Now we need to build out our materials. This is all procedural, so we won't need any photos to help us. Click and do your render view so it's easier for you to see what you're doing. I like the third option for these early stages because it's pre-lit with an HDRI. Now, select your outer sphere and add a new material. Turn the transmission up to 100%. Then scroll down a bit and turn on screen space refraction. Nice, now the outside of our eye is done. Okay, time for the good stuff. Hide your outer sphere. Select the inner sphere and add a new material. After this, head to the shading tab. There are four main types of nodes we're going to use repeatedly to design all the good bits of the eye. They are the texture coordinate, mapping, gradient texture, Voronoi texture, color ramp, and mix node. The way that we add new nodes is by typing Shift A in the workspace or by clicking Add in the workspace menu. Quick side note, I recorded this tutorial in an earlier version of Blender. It's still pretty much the same in Blender 4.0. The only difference is the principal BSDF is now folded up in the menus, so don't panic. Don't. Don't panic. Moving on. First, we're going to add a texture coordinate node, then a mapping node, then a gradient texture node, and finally a color ramp node. Say node one more time, I dare you. Connect object into the vector input, then go from the vector output into the vector input of the gradient texture. Change the gradient texture to spherical and connect the color output into the factor slot of the color ramp. Then finally grab the color output of the color ramp and put that into the base color of the principal BSDF. This whole node setup will help us separate the white of our eye from the pupil and the iris. Now, we have a black eyeball with a white center. To fix this, we need to reverse the color flags on the color ramp. In the color ramp, we also want to change linear to B-spline. This will make the transition from each color a bit softer and more natural. Right now, it's a little too soft. To fix this, go back to your mapping node and adjust the Z location. I made mine negative 0.6. Now we can start adding colors to our iris. Hit the plus icon on our color ramp. It'll give us another color flag. Select the flag and click the color swatch below. It will then open up a color wheel and you can choose the color of your iris. As you can see, order matters here. So make sure on the leftmost side of your color ramp, you have white, then the iris color, then black for the pupil. If you want, you can make the borders of the colors really sharp. You can do this by adding another color flag and pin it right next to the adjacent color. Another thing to keep in mind is that eyeballs generally have a slimy, wet kind of texture to them. To achieve this, just turn your roughness all the way down. 
You also definitely want to do the same for the material on your outer sphere. Just select it in the outliner, go to the material tab, and bring the roughness all the way down. All right, now we're halfway done. All we gotta do now is add all the cool striations you typically see in the iris. Add another set of texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Then add a Voronoi texture and a color ramp node. Just like before, connect your object node to your vector node. Then change the type on the mapping node from point to normal. Then go vector to vector, and then go from the color output to the factor input on the color ramp. Now, let's add a mix node in between our color ramp from the first node and the principal BSDF. Putting it in the middle will complete the connection for us. Then drag the color slot on your second row to the B slot on the mix node. And look, um, somehow it's worse. Stay with me here. Change the mix node to color, reconnect the slots, and change mix to overlay. Okay, it's getting better. Now go to this mapping node and change the Y scale to zero. Now adjust the scale on your Voronoi texture. I went with 35. Hey, we're getting even closer. Here's the last set of notes, I promise. Add a noise texture node, then connect that to a color ramp node. Then add a mix node. Connect your second node group into the A slot and your third group into the B slot. Then run the output of that mix node into the B input of your original mix node. It doesn't look like much has changed, but if we change the factor slider on our second mix node, we can start to see the noise texture coming into play. Change the scale settings on your noise texture and your color ramp to get the result you're looking for. If you've ever looked at a photo of an iris up close, you'll notice it's not totally smooth. To accomplish this, let's add a bump node. Run the output of your original mix node into the height of the bump node. Then run that into the normal slot of your principled BSDF. There, now you've made sandpaper eyes. Just kidding. Dial back the strength and distance to 0.3. Hey, now we're really done. The cool thing about these eyes is that they're fully procedural, so you can change any part of them to fit your needs. Need smaller pupils? Drag the black flags on your first color ramp to the right. Want some mystical dragon eyes? Add some orange and purple. These eyes are whatever you need them to be. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you're looking for a video on modeling a character from scratch, check this one out here.